Hello everyone, my name is uh, Steve Dolan. I am uh, the owner of Steeds Tech. I manufacture the Banshee VGT controllers as well as the, the Benchtop tester. You guys, turbo shops, ever Google that? It's just a tester that allows you to test various turbos. The Banshee VGT controller is a universal turbo controller that you can put on any motor. So it doesn't matter if it's a 12 valve Cummins, a Duramax Power Stroke, a 6.7 Cummins, or if you want to race lawnmowers. At the end of the day, the Banshee VGT controller is the only truly universal controller that can be put on anything. Um, believe it or not, right now, I'm in my house, in my garage, and this is where I do all the programming for my controllers. I flash the controllers here. My brother, Glenn, he owns a small LLC in Colorado Springs, uh, excuse me, called Automotive Harness Connections. He manufactures my Banshee harnesses. He actually manufactures my benchtop testers. So he does all the really hard work. To me, writing code is like playing a video game. So it's, to me, it's easy. Other people's rocket science. Um, it's easy to me because even though I have a beard, believe it or not, I'm actually in the Army. I'm a Sergeant First Class in the Army. My specialty is electronic warfare. I'm one of maybe four or five hundred of us. We're a really small field. Um, basically, no matter wherever I go, I always know one or two people at whatever duty station I go to. Um, I love it. I've been in the Army for 17 years. I plan on staying until I retire. If I'm lucky, I'll make master sergeant in a next this year, or next year if I'm, you know, if I'm lucky enough. So anyway, so let's talk about my Banshee VGT controllers. Um, I came back from Iraq in 2010. I wanted to swap a 4BT Cummings in my 2002 Tacoma, and at the time I was driving a Hilux, a Toyota Hilux around Iraq, and I realized they really don't have any power. And if I didn't rev the motor up, I will stall. So you know, swapping a Toyota diesel in my Toyota. To me, you know, it's more of like a more of a cult following than my customers are. They, it's really, really a cult following because you're paying ten to twenty thousand dollars to import the motor plus all that jazz. Um, Look, TDI, same problem. And then I came across the four BTs. I swapped the four BT in my Tacoma, and then I, I wanted to be different, and I found uh, the whole set VGTs. I purchased the controller from another company. Um, tech support really wasn't there, in my opinion. Uh, and honestly, I, I don't blame them because once I started developing my own controllers, I ran into the same problems that I believe they ran into, and that drove me to develop fixes and you know mitigations and stuff like that. So the Banshee VGT controller, um, standalone universal controller, and it wasn't really challenged up until October, November of 2019, um, and it was challenged by BD Diesel. So this is why I'm making a video. I challenge BD Diesel to a thousand dollar bet and I'll give a thousand dollars to a charity of their choosing whether it be an American uh, charity or a Canadian charity I really don't care I'll give them a check give them cash in hand you know just make the promise that you're gonna donate it to wherever you want to donate it I'm totally cool my challenge is that the Banshee VGT controller is hands down better than the BD Howler and the reason why I say that is my system's a closed loop system. It doesn't matter what you put it on. It is a truly universal controller. My harness is a modular. They're designed to be adapted to and be installed on any motor out there. So real quick, I can kind of go through stuff. I have them on 12 valve Cummings. I have my VP44 Cummings. I have them on Common Rail Cummings. I have them on 6.7 Cummings. This is going all the way back to the late 80s all the way to 2018. I don't know why people want to run my controllers on their truck with a 6.7 that I can already control the whole set turbo. My controller gives them a little extra capabilities, but at the end of the day, I personally probably wouldn't do it, but you know, it's their money, it's their project, it's, it's their build. I'll facilitate whatever they need and I'll try to explain everything to the best of my ability. So that's just the Cummings. I have these on Power Strokes. I have these on Duramaxes. I have them on Toyota Supras. I have them down in Australia, where they swap six four compounds on se uh, what seven threes or seven fours, whatever whatever the heck the Power Strokes are. Um, I have them in Africa. I have them in South America. I have them in Brazil. I have them in Argentina. I have them in Russia, where they take Nissan Petros and they swap American uh, six five GM motors into these Nissan Petros. They wanted to run the, the whole set turbo. Cool, whatever, bro. It's, it's your project, right? So 
I am the small guy trying to help the small guy. I'm not the billion dollar company or the million dollar company trying to say, hey, I got this kit, why don't you buy it? So let's just start talking about the Banshee controller. Now, I don't know much about the BD Diesel, uh, not BD Diesel, but the BD Howler. But what I do know about the BD Howler is they're trying to mimic some of my capabilities, but they're doing it 100% different than the way I'm doing, which I find absolutely hilarious. Um, and if you actually put them side by side, you'll actually see. They tap into the throttle position sensor and the temperature sensor to get high idle and to get it to turn off when the engine gets hot. I got two wires that connected to ECU to do the exact same feature. I think that's kind of funny. Um, so anyways, let's talk about the, uh, the two different controllers. So, you know, if you look at it, I'm pretty sure they use the same Deutsch enclosure that uh, my Banshee controllers use, which in itself isn't really a big deal, but I think I was one of the first ones to start doing this, which is kind of funny. So I've been using these controllers for eight years now, give or take seven, eight years, and industry, doesn't matter what big brand name you use, you know, they're just now starting to roll out their kits with these. Um, so yeah, my Banshee VGT controller. It's IP67, which in itself, okay, I, I give BD and I give all these other companies, you know, the credit. It's, it's not the controller that's IP67, it's the, it's the enclosure. So I'm using an IP67 enclosure. Um, so me saying my controller is IP67 rated isn't misleading, but it, it is because I'm trying to upsell what it is. But in reality, not. it's like, hold on, brother. <laughs> your enclosure is. Not, not your controller. Your controller is inside the enclosure. So if your controller is IP67, why don't you take it out of the case and throw it in a bucket of water? Does it short? Okay, it's, your controller is in your enclosure is. All right, so the enclosure is IP67, which is cool. Um, so it's water submersible. So you know if you have a buggy and you're swapping motor in, whatever, you can ford it. And this can be literally on the bottom of the chassis. You can ford it. And it's good to like a meter or two. Um, I honestly wouldn't go past a meter because it's just it's just like an O-ring, and it's not a good O-ring, so you could potentially flood it. But you know, it's it's there. It's a little extra protection, so you don't have to you know hide under your dash, under your seat, you put it in the engine bay, strap to your fender. I mean, I got a buddy in California. He actually just strapped his. He took the uh, the fender well out, and he just bolted it up there, and he ran the harness, and then it's all nice and hidden, and, and it looks factory when you look at his truck. Uh, so that's the enclosure. Well, let's talk about the controller. So the controller itself is reverse polarity protected. So what that means is, let's just say you're colorblind, and this shade of red looks gray, and black looks gray, or you know, 50 shades of gray, however it looks to you, and you put red to negative, and black to positive, it's not gonna hurt anything. The thing is reverse polarity protected. So that's really cool. Um, and then you start looking at alternators. I, I read tons of stuff on Cummings Forum where they say, hey, my alternator went out and shorted my ECU. This is surge protected. So if your alternator goes out, it's surge protected to 60 volts. That's pretty cool. Um, it's also, let's just say, I got tons of stuff all over the world. So I am a small company, but believe it or not, I'm worldwide. So I'm a dude in a garage, and my brother's a dude in the garage that builds the harnesses for the other dude in the garage. And our stuff is all over the world. Um, which is really cool considering, you know, my day job's in the Army, my brother's an engineer, he's a quality assurance engineer for uh, an engineering firm up in Denver. And uh, it, it's just really cool, you know, it's two guys building stuff, and you know, we're not here to make millions of dollars, we're here to help other people with their projects and make beer money along the way. So, <clears throat> my stuff's uh, uh, getting off track, but, um, but yeah, so it's reverse polarity protected, um, it's surge protected, and then if you're overseas, it also works on 24 volts. So it's 12 and 24 volt capable. So there's a voltage regulator in here that basically senses the voltage and it basically flips around and depending on what voltage the battery system is, you know, work in your car, work in your truck. If you got a semi, it works in your semi. Um, it, it's, it works. I don't know about other companies out there, but that's my challenge to BD Howler. I wanna know if my product's better than yours or if your product's better than mine and vice versa. If mine's better than yours, you guys need to step it up. If yours is better than mine, I really need to step it up because I'm the home hobbyist trying to prove that I got a, I got a name in the game. So now let's talk about the actual capabilities of the controller. Now, I could be wrong and I completely apologize if I'm wrong to BD for this, but from what I read online, I know you guys on the back of the controller when you open it up, or maybe it's on the side, there's a USB port, but I don't know if you guys actually use it. I don't know if it's like future development, or whatever so I know the capability is there 
for you guys to connect a USB cable to it. I want to say it's like a micro USB that's on the side of it, or at least the illustration I saw online had that. So the capabilities there, so I don't want to knock on them. Maybe it's like a future development, you know, in the next few months, next year, they'll have they'll be on par with me if they're not already there with some type of user interface. So with my user interface, you can easily calibrate any whole set VGT. So it doesn't matter if it's a 300, 351, 451, 551. And then the data conversion, because the data is pretty much the same, so you can actually have a 6.7, take a 551 if you really, really wanted to, slap that in your truck. Obviously, you're going to have to retune the map of the VGT table for it to work, you know, where it's actually more efficient. But your 6.7 is going to be controlled with 551. The data to control is exactly the same. The only difference is really like the load, if you want to measure like the actual torque it's putting out. Other than that, it, the truck doesn't know the difference. You just put the right connector, little adapter on it, it's whatever. But what's really cool about my turbo, well, my, my controller, is you're not limited to one truck. The common rail Dodges. You can put them on 12 valves, VP44, um, the common rails, 6.7s, the Power Strokes, Duramaxes, lawn mowers, motorcycles, Toyota Supras, anything else you can think of, Nissan Petros, doesn't matter, it's universal, um, which is really, really cool. And then you're not limited to the whole sets. So I can control whole sets, I can control the, the Garrett AVNT hydraulic turbo, I can control hella actuators. They're on like the little GT 25s, 30s, like they're really tiny turbos. Um, I gotta, I'll show you guys here in a minute. I control the 6.4 compounds. I can control uh, Hinos. If you guys ever seen like a Hino box truck, I can control them turbos. Um, they're also on a bunch of stuff, other stuff. I control Ivcos. I can control Ivcos that are all over the world. Like I got stuff, like I got customers that send me turbos because they want to be able to control them. And I do my development for free. So if you're in Russia, you're in South America, you're in Australia, you're in Africa, you're in anywhere on the planet, if you would send me a turbo to test, because I have yet to have it, I developed the logic to control that turbo 100% for free at no cost. And I'll pay the money to ship it back to you. So if you bought a Banshee controller from me and you sent me a turbo on top of that, it might cost me 500 bucks to mail that turbo back to your home country with the Banshee controller where I literally make no money. I do it 100% for free because at the end of the day, the way I view it is you, the customer, gave me access to a turbo that a customer needed that I may never have the money laying around or you know seeing one on eBay or something like that. But you know, a customer wants to be able to control it, it's something new, I get a new capability at the end of the day. So today I can't control this Iveco. Tomorrow I have a South Korean customer send me an Iveco turbo. I crack the CAN bus which I could probably do faster than anyone in the United States that does this. I cracked the L5P Turbo Duramax in about 10 seconds. I made a really cool program on my computer. It just goes after it, and once it finds it, it tells me exactly what I got to broadcast to control it. So five to 10 seconds, I had the L5P Duramax on lock. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's, that's my goal out of this. So I challenge you guys, if you dare to challenge me, I recommend, because I'm in Colorado, I'm in the Army, um, I, I really can't travel, so it's a pain in the ass, uh, which I apologize for, so it's kind of kind of more leading to my side than you know me going up to Canada to fight you there. Um, but ATS Diesel, they're the biggest company, the biggest brand name company in the state of Colorado that I would say is a household name for the diesel enthusiast. So if they agree, like I don't know if they'll agree, they might tell me to you know piss off or something like that. But if ATS Diesel agrees, I say a thousand bucks. We get a truck, whether it be a five nine. I recommend a five nine because I can get I can easily adapt it to it. But if you want to do a six seven, if you want to do a six four, I don't really care. I'll make my adapt. I'll make I'll make it work on whatever truck you want. It's real easy for me. I don't know about you guys, but you guys pick the truck. Let's go to ATS Diesel. They got a dyno. Everyone sees it in Diesel Power Mag and Diesel World, and they see all the videos. Um, we both put a thousand bucks on the table. We use the same exact truck, nothing different, same turbo. We put your kit on it. They dyno the truck. You talk about the features. You demonstrate the features. Then I'll install my truck, or I go first. I don't care. I put my stuff on it. 
I demo the uh, what it's capable of. We dyno the truck. You know, I, I'm hopefully at, like I'm hoping that they have the ability to measure all these different sensors to see what the load is and the exhaust pressure and intake pressure. Hopefully, calibrate the uh, the ratio between the two, all that jazz. Um, but you know, they they do all that, and we can actually see a side by side comparison. Multi million dollar company, home garage hobbyist, who has the better product. Um, that's my bet. Thousand bucks. We we promise it goes to a local charity, whether it be well a charity. Me, I'll just give it to the Red Cross shelter here. You know, if I won, I'll just give all the money. Your money plus my money, so two grand. I would give straight to one of the local charities here in my home city because this is my home. Um, you guys can do the same. You guys can do here, Canada, whatever you guys choose. Um, but that's my bet. Um, real quick, just to show you that. I have way more capabilities that I personally believe could be wrong, but I personally believe more capabilities. First capability, I have a cold start assist. Doesn't matter what motor it's on. It can be a mechanical 12 valve from 1989 to a 2016. When you turn the key on and your grid heater's on, the turbo's gonna close all the way. Doesn't matter what turbo it is, except the AVNT because that's hydraulic, electronic turbos. So as an electronic actuator, it's gonna close the turbo 100% essentially 100% brake. Once that 100% brake, when you crank it on the motor, the controller is then going to basically keep that exhaust pressure in the cylinders. All it's going to do, since you're not firing, you're not recirculating like EGR, you know, exhaust gas. You're firing, it helps heat the motor, and then it fires up faster. I got the idea because guys in the Army, if you've ever been in the Army and you're watching the video, how many times have you seen them take a TM to the exhaust pipe of a Humvee trying to build back pressure to get the dang thing to start. That's what actually gave me the idea. I was like, hey, I could bet I could do that with my turbos. So I invented that. So once the engine catches, it releases the exhaust brake, it idles. So on my turbos, you have a, a settable starting position. 0% is exhaust brake, 100% is wide open. So within the 0 to 100%, it goes to its starting position. By default, and my recommendation to start out for a new customer is 25%. So it goes from Full break, 25%. Once it's at 25%, it actually closes itself down. Now, this is where it's user settable. How much exhaust pressure do you want? So, you can actually say, I want 10 pounds, 15, 20, 30, 40. I've only made about 40 plus PSI, give or take, on my 6.7, well, my 5.9 with uh, the HE300. Currently, I run 10 pounds of pressure. So, once my truck starts in the morning, it high idles automatically, I have a 2759. So when it's really cold out, it automatically high idles. It closes the exhaust brake when I first crank on it. It starts 25% uh, high idles, slowly closes back down, and then it regulates that pressure. Doesn't matter what you set it to. Zero PSI, you know it's gonna be open. One pound, two pounds, three pounds, four pounds, five pounds, and it just closes in and it regulates. You can turn the high idle off and you know the pressure will drop and it comes back in. I idle it, go same thing, goes back up, and it, it just self-regulates. It's a really, really cool feature. And on a, on a common rail, it automatically stays that way until it gets 180 degrees, and I don't tap the thermostat, and I don't tap the throttle position sensor. The ECU commands all this stuff on a common rail, where you guys, from what I saw in your wiring diagrams, I could be wrong, have to tap both sensors. I don't. So now it regulates, and I don't even think you guys can regulate the exhaust pressure. I think it's on and off. I could be wrong, but from what I from what I saw online, it looked like it's on or off. So now you could regulate it, right? So and then there's a set off feature. So then you can say, hey, I'm driving. When you give a gas, it doesn't matter if it's a 12 valve, VP44, common rail, power stroke, Duramax, lawnmower, like ride, I'm talking about ride a mower, like you're racing a ride a mower, and you want one. The second you give a gas, it turns it off. It doesn't matter what it is, it just turns it off as soon as you touch the throttle. So you turn, touch the throttle, it turns it off, take your foot off the throttle, it turns it back on. But the safety feature, well, I don't want to say safety feature, but the disable feature is the engine RPMs. So the user can now define, like in my truck, I have a set to 1300 RPMs. If I touch the throttle and just rev it up a little bit, it just comes back on. But the second I hit 1300 RPMs, it disables it. So it just goes back to its uh, starting position. Now this is really good because on a common rail, you want the common rail ECU to turn the brake on and off. 
But if you have a VP44, the, comp, the ECU doesn't do that. Obviously, a 12 valve doesn't have an ECU to do that. And then when you, and that 12 valve fits in my feature, what I call a universal kit. So the universal kit would basically be everything else. So uh, P7100, the uh, VE pump, yeah, the VE pump, the uh, Power Stroke, Duramax, the 6.7s, which will be fixed here in a little bit. I'll actually have a kit that I'll tap into the throttle position there, but it'll be one wire. Use a posi tap. Um, we'll we'll uh, do that. And then if you ride a mower, you know, any any engine or vehicle you can think of that you want one of these turbos on, you know, it's a universal kit, which is two wires and you have to tie in a micro switch. That's how that works. Um, but yeah, you just rev it up and it, it disables it. Once you drive, there's two modes of logic. The first one is a static ratio. The static ratio means uh, from start, which is your idle position, to wide open throttle, back down to your idle position, the controller is going to maintain as close as it can to whatever ratio you program it to between your boost and exhaust ratio. So um, I don't know if you guys know uh, uh, Tater Built Turbos. I talk to him in Austin every once in a while, and basically it's kind of like uh, he's a really great guy. He built me my uh, my whole set turbo I ran on my truck for testing. And my thing is he has a goal in mind with his turbos, and I wanted to know what you're an actual performance guy pushing these trucks to the point they, they blow up, your sled pulling, your dynoing, when you see 500 to 1,000 horsepower, what is your boost to drive ratio? What do you think is a good ratio? And from what he told me and a few other guys, is you know 1.2 to 1.3, somewhere in there. If you can maintain that on on a Cummings, that's that's really really good. So if my turbo, if you have a 1.3 from starting to wide open, it's going to maintain that all the way. So when you are at starting. 1.3 and 0 psi doesn't really work, so it's just zero. But as you start building pressure, it's going to move that vein back and forth, the main of 1.3. So if you're at 10 pounds of pressure, your exhaust should be 13 pounds of exhaust pressure. 20 pounds, 26. 30 pounds, 39. It's, it's linear. Um, the second option for control is a variable ratio. So you get 10 boost tables and you get 10 uh, exhaust to drive ratios. And all you're going to say is at zero PSI and the last block on the boost is grayed out so you can't change these. It's, it's basically well, last year and last on this one. So it's uh, the PSI starting and the drive pressure down here is zero and zero. So on my truck, I'm using a DPS turbinator with their also the DPS S475, which the turbinator is a great turbo. It will outperform a whole set all day long in my opinion, um, except when you're exhaust braking. Exhaust braking, in my opinion, the whole set turbo is way better just by the design of it. Um, but if you're drag racing, sled pulling, and you don't care about braking, and all you want to do is just get boost as fast as you can, put power to the wheels, any VNT turbo will outperform a whole set turbo in that setting. But if you're if you're hauling a trailer, the only way to go is with a whole set because the exhaust brake is way superior, in my opinion. But it's, it's like to teach their own. There's give and takes. Um, I don't pull trailers. If I do, it's just to go camping. So the, the Turbinator is more than enough braking force. Um, but yeah, so the variable ratio. So the variable ratio, like I said, you have 10 and 10. So at zero PSI, you can't change it. You put a maximum of 2.5 to 1. The second one, you can put like 2 or 3 pounds, or you can put as much as you want or as little as you want. But on my truck, I think it's 3 pounds. And I go from a 2.5 at zero, at three pounds, right to a 1.7. At five pounds, I go to a 1.5. And I go to like a 1.4. And at 10 pounds, I'm at a 1.3. And I maintain a 1.3 ratio all the way down to about 25. Between 25 and 30 pounds, I drop down to a one to one. So if you drew a line graph, it's not a straight line. It's like, it's a straight line from here to here to this setting. Then it kind of pivots and it kind of pivots and it pivots and it pivots. So it's a multi-line graph. So it's, it's linear to each step of it. So by doing that, you actually get kind of like potential energy when you're on your low boost. So when you're low boost and you're just cruising, you're not going to make, you know, I had, I had a customer come to my house and, you know, I helped him out because he was having some problems. And he said normally he sees like eight or nine PSI. And now at the whole set, he's seeing three or four, which is awesome for fuel economy. The engine's not hurting as much. And as soon as he rolls into it, it just takes off. 
So, you know, you run a little bit harder on a dry pressure down low, and then as you accelerate, you know, so if this is your dry pressure, this is your boost pressure, so it drives higher, and then as you accelerate, it kind of goes, and if you have a really efficient turbo like a Turbinator or a VNT style, you can actually go the opposite way. So um, Banks, uh, Banks has a, Gail Banks has a really good video talking about the L5P Duramax, and it wasn't until a, uh, a customer showed me that, that basically challenged my thought. Like it, it, it challenged what I thought was right. And he's like, hey dude, check this out. I'm like, nah man, that's bullshit. He's like, no, 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 just, just watch. Just watch and listen to what Gail Banks has to say. And Gail Banks was testing the L5P Duramax, and he found a sweet spot where the turbo is super efficient. So you had, he calls it a crossover. So the crossover basically, your boost pressure was lower than your drive pressure, and then the crossover coming up is where the turbo is no longer efficient. So you might be making like 35 pounds of boost, but if you're making 35 pounds of boost and your exhaust pressure is 45, 50, you're really not making 40, like uh, the CFM you need. CFM is good, boost pressure is bad. High CFM, low boost, good. Low CFM, high boost, bad type of, type of mentality. It's all about air density, right? So it wasn't until uh, he showed me that video online, I watched it, and it blew my mind. I was like, okay, I'm wrong. I got, I got to refigure out the math to make it, a, make it the way it is now. Now it's like spot on. And if it wasn't for the uh, Turbinator, I wouldn't be able to run sub one to one. Now I can run sub to one. So yeah, so now, okay, so I talked about how you tune it. I talked about the warm start assist. Um, the last part of it, so like I said, you have two tables. The last part is actually your wastegate. Now at the end of the day, we're, I'm not controlling the fuel to the engine. The BD kit's not. Um, there's actually a couple guys, you can actually go on Mopar Man if you really want to be cheap and you want to learn how to uh, program. Now it's not programming in a sense the way I program. I don't know what BD uh, Diesel uses for their IDE. Um, but it's not the same that both of us do it. They, maybe them, I honestly don't know. But these guys online, Mopar Man, if you go on his website, he already has a source code for Adrenos. Adrenos are cheap. You used to be able to get them at Best Buy, uh, Radio Shack. They're out of business, so now you got to go to Best Buy or just buy them off the internet. You spend about 50 bucks, but then, you know, it's... If you're a guy that drives, you know, 10 miles to work every day and that's all you go, you're the guy for that. If you're the guy that likes to go hunting and you're in the wilderness of the South, North Dakotas, the wilderness of the Rockies, the Cascades, and you're, you're away from everyone, and that turbo failing is going to trash your truck, you're not the guy for Adrenos. If you're the guy who wants, you haul horses, you, you basically actually drive your truck every day, you don't want an Adreno board. They're experimental, they're meant for high school uh, high schoolers and college guys for introduction to programming, and that's what they're meant for. They're not meant for deployment. Like mine is a deployable board. BD Diesel, I haven't actually physically seen one, so I can't judge it, but based on that they, whatever they're using is in the same enclosure I'm using, it's deployable board. So what I mean by that is if it gets wet, it's not going to short. You don't have a, a little pin. You got like a little wire going into that can vibrate loose and you got hot glue holding in. You know, it's, it's not real like cheesy. It's actually meant to be used um, in a rugged environment. So Adreno is not the way you want to go for that. That's hands down. You, you don't want to do that. Um, but yeah, so the wastegate. So the wastegate, <clears throat> like I said, you got, you got 10 tables on both sides. The very last table. So let's say you want to make 35 pounds max. All you're going to do on the last table is put 40 psi. So as soon as you hit 35, it's going to start tearing down, basically five pounds to hit zero. And basically, what happens is it regulates itself in, and it basically just blows off all that energy. Now, like I said a minute ago, is I don't regulate your fuel, and as far as I know, BD Diesel doesn't regulate your fuel with their Haller kit. So with my 4BT, before I really got the logic working good, with that thing wide open, I was blowing a ton of smoke because I had huge injectors. It eventually would light that turbo and it lit it hard. So even though it's retracted in to act like a wastegate, if you have the RPMs and you have the fuel, you can light any turbo on a planet. It doesn't matter. Well, you know, maybe not the massive ones, but you know, any automotive turbo, you could potentially light if you have the velocity coming out of the exhaust to actually spool it. Um, so yeah, so you have that wastegate feature. Um, so let's talk about the exhaust brake. So the exhaust brake's really cool. Maybe BD can explain this a little better than I can, but 
my exhaust brake on my 6.7 with a whole set turbo, doesn't matter. I can be doing 90 miles an hour down the interstate, which is illegal. Don't do it. It's very bad. Um, you know, if I was going 90 miles an hour, I'll just say 75. I've been 75. I promise I've been 75 on I-25 going north and south on I-25 uh, in Colorado. So I-25 doing 75 miles an hour, fourth gear locked with my 48 RE's and 5.9 Cummins. When I take my foot off the gas, it makes about between 60 and 63 pounds. It's kind of where it fluctuates a little bit. Um, it's, I don't know why it goes at 3 PSI, it's not always the same. But it'll hold 60 pounds all the way from fourth gear 75 to second gear 20 miles an hour. They have a table on their instructions that basically show it kind of tearing down. I don't know why, um, but I know with my turbo, well, my, my turbo, but my controller at 100% brake, it will hold 60 pounds all the way to second gear. Now, I don't recommend that. So I have what's called a regulatable exhaust brake. So like I said, I got customers all over the world. Um, Canada, believe it or not, is my number one customer. Um, but I have controllers all over the world. And these guys swap these things on everything, not just Cummings. You know, Cummings is an awesome motor. It's literally the Chevy 350 of diesels. And it could take a massive amount of punishment. So it can withstand 60 pounds, sure. But you know, if you put it on a Power Stroke, maybe not. If you put it on a Nissan Petro with the GM65, definitely not. Um, so not all trucks can take that full 60 PSI pressure. So you can literally say, I only want 10 pounds of exhaust pressure. So you can be in fifth gear, the exhaust brake kicks in, it's gonna regulate itself to 10 pounds. So if you have an exhaust pressure gauge, it's gonna read 10 PSI. And then you go from fifth gear and you asshole your truck and you go down to second gear, red line the motor, your exhaust pressure goes up and then it comes right back down. Red lining, right? So now you're doing like 7,000 RPMs because you're doing like 70, 80 miles an hour in second gear, but you don't have like 200 pounds of exhaust pressure. The turbo says, hold, F itself, and it pulls itself back in, and you're doing 10,000 RPMs in second gear, doing 75, 80, but you have 10 pounds of exhaust pressure if the turbo can pull itself in all the way. So the turbo doesn't care. Like I said, it, it's a closed loop system. You tell it what you want it to do, and it's going to do it. So if you want 10 pounds of exhaust brake, you're going to get 10 pounds of exhaust brake if you're in 6th gear, 5th gear, 4th gear. And you can just keep dropping all the way down until you max the turbo out. What I mean by maximum turbo out is the veins are all the way open, so they can't open anymore, so they can't bleed off any more gas, or they're retracted all the way in like a whole set turbo. But the benefit of that is, you know, not everyone wants, you know, 60 pounds of brake that you can get from a whole set turbo. They only want maybe 40, 30, whatever, whatever their flavor is. You can program it with a Banshee. And the bench is going to maintain that from basically from the brake kicks in till the brake turns off. Now my exhaust brake, like I said, so you got the you got the regulatable exhaust brake pressure regulator. Um, depending on what engine it is, if you have a common rail, it connects straight to the ECU. If you have a VP44, it connects.